flip at me. That's a cool one. Don't I VGA? Is that what's called? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we'll start today just to follow up on, I think, what Joe said was great. To me, this is not about, you know, what Springdale's doing or, or what Utah's doing or what Pea Ridge is doing. Um, I'm going to give you a little background on me. Uh, I'm a husband and a dad, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm a principal right now, but I've served as a teacher, a coach, an AD, a principal. I'm working on my doctorate. Um, I'm unique because I have experience in a private school setting, in a charter school, and a public school. And so I've gotten to see a lot of different avenues as I've gone through this journey that has led me to where I am. Okay, this is my why. Let me tell you a little bit about that little guy. That's my son, John Miller. Uh, I'll do the short version. I've created what I've created in our school to serve students like John Miller. He's a special needs student. You don't know it by looking at him. Uh, the tough part about it is when he was born, he was perfect. For the first year or two of his life, he was perfect. And uh, he just started taking on learning deficits. Of course, later he was diagnosed from apraxia all the way down to on the autistic spectrum. Uh, he lost all his language. He lost his ability to interact with me. He lost his ability to sing, talk, and tell me that he loved me. But he was doing all those things before. And uh, it was a tough time for me. And I had to make a choice, because I, I was a very successful high school coach, an athletic director. But I knew at that time that I had to do something different, because I had done tons and tons of things to help those students that had come under me as a player. And I learned from some great mentors along the way there. But I knew that I had to do something to make a difference for kids like Miller. I think the most important thing is relationships. So why would I make a good mentor? Because I'm faster than 80% of all snakes. I don't know if you guys know that, but all of us are, as long as you can move and you're healthy. Um, I really think this is the most important thing, and I, I say that just to be facetious, but relationships are the most important thing. Joe touched on that. And I'm talking about with students, student to student, student to teacher, student to administration, but more importantly, I'm talking about every relationship you can build right here today. Get a chance to sit down and talk to Joe. Take some time and spend some time with George and Ken. I know this. I'm smart enough to know that I'm dumb enough that I need help. And so I have not been able to get what we're doing at Pea Ridge going alone. And, and I love Ken, and he talked about a lot of things this morning. But remember, he took a blank slate. And he built his own school. And we argue about this. But he built his own school from the ground up, hired his own people, put in his own things. You heard him in the keynote say, guys, it was just an administrative dream. And I just walked in and we did it. I pushed it through. That doesn't work for our public schools, does it, Aaron? It doesn't work. It doesn't work when you got to worry about parents, community, family, school board, teachers, kids, everything we deal with every day. Okay, that's a dream. And I actually saw the model that we were able to institute this year in the same situation in Lexington, South Carolina. Their superintendent said, okay, we're overcrowded. We're splitting one of our high schools. Take this. Go build what you want. So that's where I was able to take my ideas from. Um, this idea, this vision came directly from our superintendent, Rick Neal. I don't know how many of you guys know him. He is the most visionary leader I've ever been around. He's incredible to work with, work for, just be around and listen to his ideas. He came in to our admin team my first year, and he said, at the end of the year, I want you to have data, and I want you to have a vision for me. Well, I had data, but I didn't have a vision at the end of my first year as a principal. 
So we sat down together, and the, I think the most important thing I can tell you is that we did not have problems on paper. Graduation rate, 92%. Literacy, 87. Math, 80. OEP, award-winning school. So what's the problem? Why do you change? Why would you change anything? And this is what the teacher said to us. Why would you change anything when you have that data right there? And my answer was, well, what about the 10% that aren't graduating? What about the 20% that aren't achieving in literacy and math? What are we going to do different? Well, fortunately for me, again, relationships, my scholarship coordinator, LaDonna Penner, came to me and said, I know what you need. I saw your meeting with the teachers. I know what you need. I'll get the data to you by tomorrow. And she brought me some data from the last three years before I'd been at Pea Ridge. And that data showed that 65% of our seniors, you can do the math, out of 150 seniors, were going to college. That's pretty good, isn't it? How long do you think they stuck? What do you think that data showed? Anybody want to guess? One year. Okay. Semester, year. Most of our kids were sticking one year. The data showed between 30 and 40% were done with college after one year. But what about our EOC scores? What about our graduation rate? What about those things that we all use to judge ourselves and have for years because we're told this is what you've got to do. This is what you've got to be judged by. This is the box. Get in it or get out. But see, the problem was there. You know, and our AP teachers, I love them. Some of the best. They're on my leadership team. They're the greatest. We have one or two of the best AP teachers in the state. They said, that's because of us. It's our rigor that's getting these kids to stick. That's not true, guys. It's the kids that high school worked for that were sticking. And I can tell you right now, it wouldn't work for Miller. It wouldn't work for my son. And I knew that. And I couldn't live with that. So we created an environment. We decided to go. We looked at innovation. Um, we looked at the Office of Innovation. We worked with them. But we decided to go charter on our first step. And the reason we decided to go charter is we needed waivers. We didn't want to have just an innovation plan and then say, oh, we forgot to do this. Dang it, we need this. Midway through the year, you know, we need to reduce seat time. Innovation works, there's no question. Talk to multiple schools, it's a great way to start. Okay, but we were able to take that, that scholarship data and our teachers couldn't deny a problem when they looked at that. Okay, so we went full-blown charter to start our vision. Okay, and we wanted to reduce the amount of first-year college dropouts and then we were able to get some job data through our JAG program. Most of you probably have JAG in your schools. I had my JAG teacher pull. Our average kids that didn't go to college started out between seven and eight dollars an hour. So we were able to take those two pieces of data, put them together and say this is what we're going to do. So we created Pea Ridge Manufacturing and Business Academy. And you saw our vision today. Students wrote this. We had some ideas, we created a Wordle, but we let them put this together. It was an open enrollment charter, and I don't want to slow down and get into all the details. What does that mean? That means any kid could come to the charter. Whether they were at the ALE, whether they had an IEP, none of those things mattered, okay? None of those things mattered to us, and our vision was no barriers for our students. That was it. That's what we decided as a team with my teachers and our administration we wanted was no barriers. And I think that's important to hear because Ken talked all morning about barriers, if you heard him. I hope you got the chance to hear him. But we said no barriers. So as we moved along, we came up with a slogan, give the kid the will. Okay, and I think that's very important because our kids understand that they are personally responsible for their own learning in this environment. Okay, and the first way we started is we said, okay, we got to give the kid the wheel. We got to figure out what we're going to teach these kids. What can we do to get them better jobs for the ones that aren't going to college? So these are the three pieces that we had to build our vision on. Okay, and this was not done overnight. It took us um, 
six months. They took a couple of trips to Waco. We met a lady named Donna McCaffin at Waco School District who was over Waco School of Innovation. And she had one pathway. I want you to write this down. This is all she had in her school, but it was full. She had no spots available. It was welding. She had boys, she had girls, she had every ethnicity in, in the book in that school. She had special ed kids, she had AP kids, but she knew right there in Waco was one of the largest welding employment divisions in the United States. And so we went to her, she came to us, we started those conversations. Then the next thing we did is we said, we got to get, Mr. Neal said, we got to get business partners involved, much like Joe said. How are you going to do that? We started conversations. We started conversations. We started calling all the corporations in our area. The next thing we did was call the Northwest, Northwest Economic Arkansas Council and say, we need to come to a meeting and talk to all the businesses and tell them what we want to do. This was three years ago, guys. Three years ago. When we started, we had four pathways. We had eight business partners. Now we have five pathways, 17 business partners, and they're still coming. We've got business partners begging to get into our school now that I've never even heard of. And so I think it's important, like he said, the businesses are hungry. They want to tell you what they need. Our list is the same as his. Soft skills, uh, punctuality, personal responsibility, ability not to be on the assembly line with their cell phone out on Facebook when we've trained them not to. You know, and there's machines coming by their head that can put, a, put an eye out or cut a finger off. So a lot of those things. Now the most important thing to Mr. Neal was this right here. The most important thing to me was the college curriculum. Again, I go back to my dad. I saw that our kids weren't sticking. And you know, we had, some, we had some heated discussions over what was the most important part. But in the end, we had to agree to disagree. And so what we were able to do there, like he said, is bring in WAC, Northwest Arkansas Community College, just a two-year college, great school, NTI, and Arkansas Tech to the table. Now, Arkansas Tech's in Russell. Pea Ridge, we're up here. Okay, so that's quite a trip. That's quite a trip for our kids, and that's quite a trip for their representatives every week when they come up. But they wanted to get involved. They were hungry for something like this, guys. So what we did is we created an associate program for juniors and seniors. Every course and every pathway, which we'll talk about in just a second, they're tied into college credit. Now, I may know right now that I'm going into plastic and metal manufacturing, and I'm not going to college. I am going to get a job welding, or I'm going to get a job at Beckhart, somewhere in our area in industry, because I can make $25 an hour doing it. But data also tells you that a kid that gets college credit while he's in high school has a better chance to do what, Joe? Yep. That's it. He'll get back, he'll work, and he'll get back in college at some point, is what data will tell you. And kids that get college credit in high school also have a higher chance of sticking in college. So those are two pieces that are tied together right there. And then now, how are you going to have a half a day where you're working at your business partner, you're working in the shop, the teacher's coming from the business to teach, our teachers are there, and a half a day where you're getting college curriculum, what does that leave for the rest of the day? And that was our issue. How are we going to do this? We looked at every school around and could not find a model. We knew, we knew right off the bat from talking to Donna that we had to have a learning management system. We knew that. You can't start this without a learning LMS. Can't do it. So you have to really, and Ken talk, touched on this this morning, you have to really investigate what's important to you as far as what you want out of your learning management. Do you want attendance? Do you want grades? Do you want teachers to be able to give oral defenses? What do you want out of it? So we, we settled on iSchool. And write this one down, responsive education. That's who serves our curriculum, who our learning management system managers are. If we tell them we need X content tied to this Common Core standard, they put it in there. Okay, if our teachers go through the content in their chemistry class and their science facilitator, you know this is in our this is in our Common Core standards, and we didn't have enough on this. Our kids struggled with this. Here's our data at the end of the year. They get with them, they put it in there. Okay, and they do a lot of our training for our teachers. So those are the three prongs that we were able to build our school on. Now, West Memphis built a school, you saw some of that today, very similar to us on a similar prom. But they do their college work all at their community college. Okay, so it's totally different than Pea Ridge because we're 30 minutes away, Joe knows this, from anything. 
okay? We're 30 minutes up the road, up the mountain. So we couldn't have our kids that don't have cars, 60% poverty. We couldn't have all those kids at NWAC or Arkansas Tech, okay? So we had to bring it to us. We had to find a way to get around that. And the iSchool was the innovation part that allows me to take my math, algebra, math, science, English, or history, or any of the other electives online if I choose to. Okay, and we're a blended learning environment. You'll see some pictures in a minute. We have facilitators that are certified in every classroom where our kids are using iSchool. Okay. Now, the big thing, and I, I got this one from Dr. Dickerson. Casey knows about this. When we were in Leader to Leader, his thing, everything he based everything on, Jay knows this, choice. Choice for the kids, choice for the parents, choice for the community, choice for the students. Choice, 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 because there's choice out there, and if you don't have choice, they're going to leave you and go somewhere where they have choice. And it may not happen for the next 10 years. I mean, Key Ridge is a great school. You know, a lot of kids might not flock out of there because we had that traditional environment. So as we went in, these are our pathways right here. Industrial technology, plastics and metal manufacturing, healthcare, sales and logistics, broadcasting and multimedia. Now when we got our data back from the Northwest Economic Council on the jobs in our area, you know, this made sense. The one that didn't make sense is right here. Because I'm thinking, how are there jobs? I don't get this. So I had to call, hey, I need a little bit deeper on this. What, what are these 7,000 jobs you're talking about here? We have three TV stations up there. You know, I didn't know, I wasn't educated on that. Well, then I was told, well, Walmart TV produces all of their own commercials and all their own documentaries. They're the largest freestanding television corporation in the world. I had no idea. I lived right there in the center of it. Didn't know it. Never heard that. Had no clue. But they're looking constantly for people with broadcasting and multimedia skills. Much like he said, the student at his school made the video. Man, perfect fit for him. And we've had some of those kids, too in the last couple of years, guys. We've had some of those kids absolutely in our school. Okay, so this is what was really important to me. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't take this vision and, and put it into play without this. All right, so these are the things that were important to me. Now, some programs like healthcare management, our kids are leaving with the PCA, a CNA, depending on how far they go in the program, okay, might even get that associate, full associate. But then some of our programs, like plastic and metal manufacturing, you're leaving with two or three different welding and metal manufacturing certificates and 12 hours at Arkansas Tech. Okay, so the, the level of college credit varies. You know, the three through NWAC, they can go as far and as fast as they want. But the level does vary a little bit in all of those. We're not handing out, a lot of people say we're handing out associate's degrees. We're not. We're not. We're trying to get that kid up to about 24 hours, make sure he understands the basics, and then when he gets to that college or he gets to that job, he can get the training, he or she can get the training that the corporation wants them to get. Okay, this is where it gets really complicated. Okay, so I'm going to try to make it as simple as I can. Remember what I said earlier, no what? Barriers. No barriers. That was the big one. Okay? And it took a lot to figure this out. So basically you've got three components here. You've got the classes that you know everyone has to have, right? Your core, your basics. You've got different kinds of structure. And then the innovative part is our kids can do all of this. Because we knew if we created a, an environment, a school within a school, where the kids couldn't be in athletics, they couldn't be in bands, it is important, contrary to what Ken said in our, in our community. 40% of our kids are in band or athletics. So it's very important in our community. Okay, so we knew no barriers, no barriers. So, for example, Casey may be in the plastic and metal manufacturing pathway. She has her high school time where she takes history. And then the rest of her classes, she comes to the regular high school and takes AP courses. Traditional, old school AP courses in there with direct instruction. Whereas Joe may have his time where he takes all of his classes online with an instructor, blended learning format, 
But then in the afternoon, he goes to football. Okay, and I think that's the most important, that was the most important thing. We did a lot of student surveys on this, how we were going to roll this out. That was the most important thing we heard is we got to be able to be in band and athletics to our kiddos. Okay? And I'll tell you, when I got to Pea Ridge, we were horrible in football and we were even worse in band. <laughs> now, I don't know what's happened in the last four years. I don't know if our talent level has risen. I don't know if it's, we had turnover at both positions. I don't know what it is. But all of a sudden, we're really good at both and have been for the last three years. So it's very important, very, very important, especially when you're young good and people don't understand what it's like to be good over a long period of time like Greenwood, right? You guys have been good forever, been good forever. It's just sustained. So if you're in the high school, it's independent units. You set up appointments with teachers. You have all of that opportunity to do one-on-one -on -one group work. You can choose project-based options from responsive ed. You can choose individual units, whatever fits your need as a learner. Okay, and each teacher is assigned to a group of students. And we use JAG training. Each, every teacher in our building is trained in JAG. Okay, we're trying to work hard to use what the state's given us. It's a great resource if you actually use it the way it's intended to be used. And so they meet with those teachers. If I finish a unit, I give an oral defense to the teacher, and then I take a mastery-based test. Competency-based learning is what it is. If I, for some reason, do not score 90 on that test, and people cringe when you say that, 90, ooh, that's high, then I have to go back and retest. Okay, now I may choose different models for my test. I, mean, I can do an online physical multiple choice test. I can do a writing test. I can do a presentation to a teacher. I can say, hey, I get this content like Joe was saying, but I just don't know that I can pass a multiple choice test on it. Let me defend it again orally and make a presentation to my peers. I can do that as well. Okay. And it, it, it's a great model that we've got going with high school. It's a great model for our students. And remember, I can go take an agri class at the high school. I can be in band. I can take any AP choice that I want to take. It's all about choice. That's what personalized learning is. You give the kids the will. And you let them tell you, what do I want to take? Not, no, you've got to have these, these 16 things for graduation. Yeah, we all have to have a certain number of graduation requirements. But they're getting to choose their path. Okay, so this is how our structure was the first year. Very simple if you look at that. Okay, it was easy. We got an easy situation. So there's an AM and a PM pathway. We can structure it all the same as a regular school day. If I'm in pathway in the morning, which means I'm in my welding classes, I'm in my nursing group, as soon as I'm done with my pathway work, I can go eat lunch. These times are very flexible. They're not locked in. How many State Department people do we have in here? Okay, we have to have them for the state, right? <laughs> Don't tell anyone that. They're very flexible. Okay, then I go and I work on my high school. Now, within that high school, I might have pullouts. I might be going up to take Spanish 3. Now, I might be going to take a uh, home economics class or an agri class. I design my schedule. We call it an high school time, but I choose my schedule. I sit down and I design an individual progress path for my school year. Now, can I change? Sure, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We've had some kids get in nursing and then say, you know, we went to the nursing home yesterday and I had to change the diaper and you know, I just don't know that I want to do that later in life. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Okay, that is going to happen. That's part of the progress. Uh, and the kids that have morning pathway always have athletics at the end of the day. That's that one study that we couldn't, we couldn't flex. Okay? And then it just vice versa for the people. Okay? Now, money. Ken really hit on money. Money's not a problem. Money, 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 money. Yeah, money is a problem. But there's money out there. There's money out there. This is what we were able to do. Okay, this funded the construction of our school, our physical facility, like Joe was talking about. All right, this money funded that, and it hired, paid the salaries for our teachers, and bought all of our technology, which we're one-to-one -one Chromebook school across the board. The kids take them home. Twenty-five percent of our kids don't have internet at home. Okay, but they go to McDonald's. They'll come sit in the school parking lot. I mean, they find a way to get their work done when they're engaged, and it's important. So we were able to get two hundred and fifty 
for construction, equipment, and salaries from Walton, and we were able to work with the charter department to get six hundred for a total of eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars to start our school. So the money's there if you want to get it, guys. Is it work? Absolutely. And I didn't write one single grant. We had a team of people that did that within our school district. But this year, we realized the schedule that I just showed you when you have two years of pathway will not work. Okay? Because now I've got junior level associates and senior level associates. And our program is just 11, 12. 9, 10, they're in a traditional environment in a sense. I'll show you a little different here in a minute. Okay? But we had to find a different schedule. We had to go really flexible right here with the schedule. Okay, so what we were on, this is what the high school looked like when I got there. We had eight period day, 50 minute classes, four minutes between changing, four minutes to get from one class to the other, okay? And every kid had eight classes. Well, what if I only need six credits to graduate? Well, take eight classes. Why? Because that's what we say you have to do. Okay, I compare it to this. This is how I hit my teachers with it. This is how I got them sold on this. Imagine going into an 8 o'clock meeting with me, and at 3.30 in the afternoon, 7.55 meeting, and at 3.30 in the afternoon, you're still listening to me talk. And I've given you seven four-minute breaks throughout the day. You have to be back on a bell, or I'll write you a referral. And after four referrals, I'm going to fire you. Put yourself in that position. How, how would that feel if your day was structured that way? That's what we were doing to our students, guys. And that sure wouldn't work for my son. Okay, so the vision that we had, I'm gonna kinda do what Joe did. I'm gonna let the kids, Casey, if you'll just click on vision, it'll open a link for me. I'm gonna let the kids, and again, this was a project-based learning and marketing class. The kids have created this, it's very rough. They actually just finished it Friday. We're gonna use it as a tool. We're not gonna pay someone to do promotion for us. The kids are gonna do the design.
personal responsibility, the ability to get myself to class, the ability to email my teachers, correspond with them, the ability to have ILT time, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, to go see every teacher I have every day. You heard one kid say the ILT times correspond. We'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So that was our vision. I can't tell you you're going to look at this and understand it because it took me two weeks. Okay, and a trip to South Carolina and about 14 different people from South Carolina helping me to get this. But I want to give you the template to look at. We had to modify what they did. Like I said, our community and our school needed athletics and band every day. They had a winning football tradition at Lexington where I went. They didn't need it every day. It was a new school. They could start from the ground up. So this is our model. Okay, and you can design your classes as a teacher for 30 minutes for an hour or for an hour and a half. And I know I've heard some bad things about the hour and a half class today, but some of our um, language arts teachers and some of our uh, upper level science teachers are doing a tremendous job with the hour and a half class. And another thing this schedule has allowed us to do is we were about 16 classrooms short. So what were we looking at doing, administrators? Building a new building. Well, guess where that money's been able to go? Back to the kids, we went to Flex Mod and learned that our teachers could rotate classrooms, go mobile, and now I have empty classrooms all 